Now on BBC News, it's The Travel Show. My name is Tony Giles and I'm totally blind and severely deaf in both ears. Uh, now we're moving. Feel the wind in my hair. And I spent the last 21 years travelling. I visited over 120 countries. Every continent in the world, including Antarctica. My mission is to visit every country in the world. I started off in December planning this recent trip and I decided I should start in Egypt at the top of North Africa and work my way through several countries to get to Ethiopia. Okay, so I got some fish. So I'm now feeding the birds. Oh! It's my passion, it's what I do, it what makes me happy. It's the biggest challenge I can get. I just want to be normal. Got to be strong all the time. It's the only way I can travel. It's the only way I can cope. I've explored quite a bit of Addis and I think it's time to move on and explore a bit more of this wonderful and fascinating country that is Ethiopia. I really want to try and get to the Rift Valley and try and visit some of the lakes, get a bit more of the nature and natural sort of ambience and uh, really get off the beaten track. <laughs> We're going to the village and lake of Sway, which is roughly two, three hours south of Addis Ababa. And it's one of the fresh Rift Valley lakes. And apparently it has lots of bird life and hippopotami. Come on, come on. Hello. Come on. Lake Sway? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm asking okay, okay. What's your name? My name is Salam. Hello. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tony. Okay. I'm from England. Yeah. Mm. Hey. <laughs> I can hear something. A tractor? Helicopter? Motorbike. Motorbike, yeah. Motorbike. The lake is in this direction? Yeah. The biggest problem for me is I got no direction because it's just an open field, so there's nothing to follow, and the wind's giving me problems. They're trying to follow the sound of the cow, but the wind's taking away from my hearing aids. This is one of the biggest problems for me when I'm traveling, is the wind. If I can't follow something on the ground, then I try and follow sounds like traffic or other noises. I got the cow's tail! <laughs> there it goes! And I managed to grab its tail and it decided to run off and drag me with it. <laughs> so that was fun. I hear there's some local kids around giving fish to the Marabal store. Okay, so I got some fish. So I'm now feeding the birds. Oh! One of the main reasons I come travel is get off the beaten track, get away from the tourist crowd, and this lake is ideal for me because it's peaceful, away from tourists, just locals, very natural. It's perfect. Yeah, natural, yeah.
From some of the research I've done about Haile Selassie and Ethiopia and hearing a bit about the Rastafarian culture and this idea that Haile Selassie had sort of designated a bit of land so that former African slave descendants could come back to Africa. And that sounded kind of interesting so I thought I'd head to a town called Shashamani which is home to a Rastafarian culture. Lots of people out. This feels very lively, very rural, traditional. I like it. Hello, salam. The driver and I are now looking for my accommodation, the Rastafarian run lodge. My name is Sandrine. Hi. Alex, I'm Alex. Alex? Hi. Husband Thanks. of Sandrine. Thanks. The owner of the place. Oh, thank you. Welcome in Zion Gen Lodge. Thank you very much. Welcome in Amon Zion I. Thank you. Rastafari. Yes, we're Jin. Come on. Oh, wow, you're small. Like a lot of Western European tourists who think of Rastafarian culture, lifestyle, I have my sort of stereotypical idea of dreadlocks and just laying about listening to reggae all day. Didn't realise it was probably not all like that. But I still had some. And when I got there I met Alex and his wife and very quickly they changed that whole perception that I had. The wire house. Okay, thank you. Of Ethiopian ancient Ethiopian people. Wow. I became Rasta man as a teenager. You know, when I saw Bob, Bob yeah. Marley, yeah. in France, I was so amazed, yeah. you know, by his yeah. performance on stage. Sure. You know, he touched me yeah. and changed my life, definitely. Touched you inside, eh? Yeah. In the heart. Yeah. <laughs> I discovered who I was. Yeah. You know, he gave me a sense of dignity. What's a real Rasta, man? A real Rastaman is a faithful servant of the Almighty, Ja Rastafari. Ja, okay. Someone who tries his best to live righteous. So Ja is God, yeah? To, to, to love his next. His neighbor. To fulfill the will of God okay. on earth. So it's not about smoking ganja and no, listening no, no. about Mahalo? No, I'm not a smoker, to tell yeah. you the truth. You know, it's not all Rasta who smoke ganja. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have Rasta who don't smoke. <laughs> One of my biggest loves is music. I've always loved music, so I can connect with it. I don't need to see, I don't even need to hear with music, I can feel the rhythm. Music's beautiful because it crosses all boundaries. Doesn't matter what skin colour, what disability, doesn't matter. I told Alex, oh, I play drums, and he said, I play drums. He started playing and I sort of started following, so we just sat there, the two of us, drumming, jamming. Sharing energy and positive vibes and connecting. It was a really beautiful moment. Hey. Woo! Ah, oh, that was awesome. Amazing. You still feel excluded at times? We don't have no rights. Mm -hmm. We're not Ethiopian citizens. No. We're foreigners, but yes. we decided to live permanently and forever in Ethiopia. But we don't really get recognition after so many years. We just got the other day ID card, you know, to stay legally, you know, for five years. But with a lot of conditions. Mm -hmm. Don't it's not so easy so to live as Rasta people in Ethiopia. You're still considered as foreigners? Yeah. I'm a Sinhalo. I'm now in a Bajaj, a local tricycle. You have a favourite football team? I like Liverpool. Mo Salah. Mo Salah. Yeah. Hey, cool. Small 
Mike. Are you okay? Well, my mum's pretty special, very special, amazing. She is the most important person in my life. She supports my travels, she encourages me, she helps me with my maps, she helps me research. I can do most things on the internet with a speech software. The one thing I can't do is book flights. The websites are impossible for all air companies. So she books flights for me. She's my rock that I stand on. She's the reason I can do this. Without her, I'd be nothing. Uh, so right, we just landed in Lalibela, um, one of the major cities, tourist cities in the north of North Ethiopia. So I knew when I wanted to come to Ethiopia that one of the places I had to visit was Lalibela. These rock churches, the idea of these churches, what they might mean to the people. I thought I just had to come here. So when I landed in Lalibela Airport, it's a bit confusing because normally I'd had the assistants and they'd take me off, take me through the airport, but the guy who works there took me through the airport and outside and so handed me on to another guy. At first I thought it was my couch surfer. And so I started walking with him. He wasn't saying much. And I was starting to get a little bit concerned. Wow. You're the couch surfer here? Couch surfer, yeah. Nice to meet you. And then I started asking questions like, uh, are you my couch surfer? And he, he took me by the bus and said, go on. Okay. Give me luggage? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And I was going to ask the bus driver to call the number I had. And then a Betty showed up. OK, nice to welcome, Tony. Hi, nice, nice to see you. Yes, good to meet you. Yes. It all got sort of cleared up. That was a bit concerning. Almost kidnapped, but not quite. <laughs> That'd have been a better story if it had been. Now we are almost nearby to La Libela. So just five minutes to arrive uh, my home. Okay. It's all rocky, really rocky. And stony, you know, I like this, this is great. It's really steep. It quite difficult to walk along, and I thought, wow, where are we going? If this is what Lally Valley is all like, this is going to be great. Thank you. It's my house. The place I'm staying tonight for me is perfect. It's as rough as you can get, it's as off the beaten track as you can get, it's as basic as you can get, it's real Africa for me. And it wakes up all my senses. This is the toilet. Okay. This is the toilet? Yes. It's a bit of a walk if you get caught short. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing new for me. It's just a bit more difficult with the steps. I just gotta be a bit, a bit slower and the door. Yeah take my time but if I get stuck I just shout and people there's people around here people come and help me it's not a problem to me oh yeah I can smell it yeah. I love it part of the adventure oh. I'm Skype with my girlfriend it's ringing hi copy more happy birthday happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, darling, beautiful I got be more. Happy birthday to you. I miss you. Alright, be good. Bye. If 
I want to visit places that are quite tricky, I try and find a guide, a personal guide to show me around. My name is Zamet. Hi Zamet. Yeah, I'm a local guide in Ladibela. Okay. Yeah, today is explained for the church is for you. Okay, thank you. Eleven churches. The church is divided into three groups. The first group church, there are six church. Yeah. And the second group church, there are four church. Okay. And the third group church, only one church. When were they made? What what year? Sorry? How old are they? Uh, 1,000 years old, okay. more than, yeah. The church is in front of me. It's pretty rough, big steps. The guide was probably not guided the blind person before, so he didn't really tell me anything about the steps or the terrain. Started telling me information when I sort of started asking her. I don't think she could really understand me, and I couldn't understand her at all. This church is the uh, biggest Rokun church in Ethiopia. The Beta biggest? Bacaniale, the biggest. Outside, inside, totally 72 pillars. Sorry? 72 pillars. Seven pillars? Yeah, 72. Yep. Outside, uh, 34. Inside, 38. Totally 72 pillars. This way? Yes. What does it look like? Just uh, one door, uh -huh. the main gate, the little bit of uh, windows to get in allowed only priestess. And the, the windows have glass? In? No glass, just rock. Open. Yeah, rock. A rock. Just rock window? Yeah, yeah, rock uh -huh. windows. So now where are we heading? Around there, we get inside this. This is the entrance, huh? Okay. Yeah. We went to the first church and walked around it and could hear chanting. She's trying to explain, but it's very difficult to understand her. It's ordinary rocks. Sorry? It's ordinary pillars, right. not a collapsed. So the column? Yeah, this is very cold. Okay, where's your arm? This one. Very frustrated, a bit upset, unsure how to handle it, how to extricate myself from the guide without being rude and also getting another guide to continue. Probably can't do this by myself. I could probably have a go and try and follow tourists, but the terrain is pretty, pretty rough. I just want to be normal. He's a nice person, but... Oh. Not very good at expressing my emotions. Got to be strong all the time. It's the only way I can travel. It's the only way I can cope. I'm guiding you now. Okay. Okay? I will be on your left. Okay, because the wall is on the right, and then one step, tiny step, and then keep forward, and then a big one, yes, well done, keep another one, that's good. You can feel it either side, if you stretch your hands. All right. We got a different guide organised, so gently got out of the situation without offending. I felt more confident with him, I felt more secure, and got the information I wanted, like, explained it in great detail, and it was very personable with me and gave me what I needed. This is the moment for you to take a picture, Tony. Yeah. Down there is Peter Georgis. It is a shape of a cross, yep. made of one rock, completely detached from the surrounding rock. So one monolith. Yes, one monolith. Inside, there is a tunnel to get to the church. It's almost like a I've fortress, got... isn't it? Exactly. few steps forward, we are literally in the center of the church. So we're in the transepts, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The pillars are part of the structure. Right, right. So it is supporting itself. Yeah. But the space is very peaceful mm. and very calming. Oh, okay. And yeah, a lot of echo because of the shape, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Big 
step feels like a big slope. Yeah. Two more steps and we'll get there. Yeah. And we shall see the beautiful ceremony. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. So this morning in Lanibella, I went to this amazing service up at one of the rock churches. It's almost like being transported back in time. Keep coming. All these hundreds, thousands of people around me. It's quite calming. I feel quite emotional. I didn't expect to feel that. The energy here is quite overwhelming. Last thing we sort of did was uh, light a candle. That's when it kind of hit me, really. Very spiritual saying just got to me and uh, let me emotions go. Thought about the people I love and the people I lost recently. Just said goodbye to some people. Not leaving them behind, but just sending them on their way, releasing all the pent up grief, I guess. That was good. Good, I'm glad. I had to give the impression I was okay and I was good. And you know, I couldn't get my mum worried. Being showed that it's okay to let go, okay to show weakness. It's been an awesome week, an emotional week. Visit some amazing places. So I've grown, I've become a better person. I think we made a heck of a documentary and I think it will show people that a disabled person, a blind deaf person can do incredible things and so can other people. And hopefully it will make them realise that they don't have to let them, anything stop them from living their dreams. <laughs>